Let's see what I've got here to show you. Let's see all my lures. Ah, here we go. A spoon. I make wooden lures. Sometimes you're a little, use a little metal, but I really don't make metal lures. And here's one, the old tried and true red devil, um, red and white spoon, whatever you want to call it. Um, I was using these along with two or three other lures as a kid, I mean, 60 years ago. So they've been around a long time. Um, narrower in the front, wider in the back. They have this spoon-shaped curve to them. And um, they actually, you know, are kind of a go-to lure. We have lots of new stuff now, but these things actually work. I mean, they work. Um, so I am going to try to make a lure that is like this. It'll be a little bit bigger. It'll be a little bit thicker. But I'd like to make one out of wood. I don't know if it can be done. I don't know if I can do it so it'll stay together, but it's pretty thin. And I don't know um, if it'll be durable enough to use, but I'm gonna try to make one that is. So, let's get started. So, here's the plan. I wanna take and glue up three pieces of wood. Uh, the top piece will be mahogany. The center piece, a very thin one, will be maple, and down here will be walnut. So, I want to make this spoon shape, and it's going to have a curve to it and a curve on the inside. So it'll it'll be like eyes like you see metal spoons, kind of like this shape, sort of cupped. Um, so when it's carved and sanded, it'll be almost like a bullseye. Will be mahogany on the top, a maple ring in the middle, and the darker walnut on the bottom edge. On the underside of it, I'm going to put some kind of foil or something shiny. I am going to have to put a through wire in here though, through the center. So after I get it cut and carved, I'm going to have to, on the underside of it, I'm going to have to make a small trench, very, very narrow trench for the wire. Um, it's not going to be easy to do. I have to be careful not to break this. It won't be a problem afterwards because <clears throat> um, I am going to epoxy it in. There'll be the foil over it and then the whole spoon will be um, you know, clear coated with UV resin. I may end up putting two or three coats on it just for strength. Hooks on the back. Maybe some kind of a trailer with feathers, I'm not sure. Um, and I will have to somehow, I think, I'll have to check it, but a spoon really needs to be a sinker, because if not, you know, it's gonna be a problem. Spoons are heavy. So I'm gonna have to route a couple of grooves along the bottom edge before I put the foil on, and probably lay some lead in there to help it sink. I have some pretty heavy wood that I'm using, including that maple layer in the middle, which tends to make lures quite heavy um, and uh, they still float but they're you know barely floaters almost neutral buoyancy so um, don't know if it's gonna work we'll see I've never made one before I don't think I've ever seen a wooden spoon before is it even practical to make a wooden spoon I don't know so for woods I've got for the back side of it this uh, darker wood which is walnut um, for the center of it I've got maple, which is really hard, but I want this to be a sinker anyway. I'm probably gonna have to add weight to it somehow. And for the top or outside layer, I have this really pretty piece of mahogany. And um, after it's it's carved and curved, it should, it should produce sort of a bullseye effect a little bit. I was going to do a lateral um, um, glue up with a stripe in the middle but I knew I had to cut a, um, you know, through wire and I was afraid that might break. So we'll, we'll do it this way instead.
I'm going to glue this up in a sandwich like this. Um, and the reason this piece is so thick is because I'm going to need to be doing some cutting to shape this on the saw. So I want a nice square edge to be able to put on the saw. If it were narrow, it would uh, have a hard time doing that. So now to glue it up. saying, whoa, it's kind of overkill with the parallel clamps. Well, I have a couple, couple little F clamps. Well, if you've got any parallel clamps, you probably know what I mean. They just clamp really good. They clamp square, nothing slides. Um, things sit level in them and line up. So I kind of use them wherever I can. start by planing the top of this down because uh, the top part, the top layer won't be this thick. It'll only be, you know, about a third of that. taking some wood off and some sanding this is what we've got and the shape of the lower pretty much now it's not perfect because there is the grain of the white wood that mixes with the brown so it looks a little feathery in some places but I, I kind of like that that natural look um, now I think the goal is to cut it to thickness while I still have this nice square edge to lay on the uh, saw and then to cut the shape up. this band saw when I was 22 years old so it's pretty old um, but got it close the belt sander will finish up the rest I'll be back <laughs> middle layer of maple so I know I've kind of gone deep enough now I can curve up more on the sides and get a contour because this wool will not be this thick I'm gonna have to take the edges down quite a bit well this is what we've got it's pretty concave it's pretty rough though you can see that the top needs to be ovaled out a little bit more to match more of the contour of the inside which is cut out quite a bit so I need a lot of sanding I think we've got something that's really close. I found that you can get pretty good symmetry with the curve if you even out the wood and make it look symmetrical. Um, the underside is still a little bit rough because uh, I can't get that on the belt sander with a sander too good, so I'll have to work on that some more. But it does have a nice spoon, carved out spoon effect to it. It's getting late, so I think tomorrow I will continue, a little more sanding, and I've got to cut somehow the inside of this to put a through wire in. That's going to be tricky. I 
have collected some pretty cool tools over the years that work good. Not possible with a saw. Curved surface. much trial and error we have the lead in here and it's feeling pretty hefty um, I've got this holographic foil underneath because it seemed to mold better than just regular tin foil did on it and we have the through wire in on both ends epoxy resin on this and put it in the UV chamber. There it is. Put it on a wire hook, put it in the chamber. <laughs> 